Hi everyone, uh, Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and in uh, this latest video I want to show you one of our new cameras, uh, the G10 Mono uh, CMOS imaging camera. So um, we've had a color version of this for uh, several years now, and Sony finally came out with a mono version, and we were really excited about that because monochromatic cameras are much more versatile than... Um, than a comparable color camera. You get a lot more sensitivity because all the pixels are looking at all the light. Uh, and then you have more versatility in terms of being able to use different filters in front of the camera in order to do, uh, to take different types of images, either broadband or narrowband. So let me go through some of the, uh, the features of the camera and then I'll show you some examples uh, that I've taken um, with the camera. Uh, first of all, it's a 14-bit four-thirds format, back-illuminated uh, CMOS chip, 11.7 uh, million pixels, 11.7 megapixels, um, in the mode that uh, we recommend for astronomy. And why did I say that? I'll get to that in a second. Um, uh, it's very sensitive. The quantum efficiency of this chip is uh, over 85%. Um, our previous um, monochromatic camera, the, the G16, uh, first of all, it was only a 12-bit camera. This is 14-bit. And it only had a, it maxed out, that Panasonic chip maxed out at 60% uh, quantum efficiency. So um, this is over 85%, so much, much more sensitive for uh, capturing that faint light of objects in the sky. Um, it's, uh, just like all of our other ones, it's got USB 3. There's a USB 2 hub. Uh, if I can see this on the screen, yeah. So USB 3 to the computer, and then there's USB 2 hub, a two-port hub. Two, yeah, two-port hub. So you can connect in um, uh, your Nautilus filter wheel, um, an off-axis guider uh, when you're uh, imaging, or, or, or a separate guider. Just, just plug the, uh, the auto guider in here, um, and it acts as a hub. So there's less wires coming off of the, the telescope rig um, to your computer. 12-volt uh, uh, port here, that's uh, power for the electronics and the um, thermoelectric cooler. Uh, it cools down to 35 to 40 uh, degrees below ambient temperature uh, for really reducing the noise. I don't recommend going all the way down to the bottom of that range, just because if the next night it warms up a little bit, all your darks, you, they won't match. Uh, plus, if it's really dewy outside, um, it can you can struggle to keep the, uh, the window free of frost. Um, Speaking of that, there is a heater built onto the front um, uh, window, and uh, that will help keep uh, some of that frost off. But if it's really, really humid outside, I live on the coast, and many times uh, if I try to push the, the uh, cooler down too much, uh, and it's 95% humid because it's well, there's almost you know uh, fog condensing out, then uh, then sometimes I run into trouble. Um, it's ASCOM compatible, so uh, works with any third-party uh, camera control program. I use it with uh, Sequence Generator Pro. Uh, it would work with Nina, with uh, SharpCap, with all, a host of other ones uh, because it's ASCOM compatible. Um, uh, now, why did I say originally that in the mode we uh, recommend uh, it's 4000 by 3000? Um, I forget exactly what the spec is. I, uh, when I say 4000, 3000, just know I'm talking about 4128 by 2808. Uh, and it's a 4.3 meg, uh, 4.3 micron pixel at that um, resolution. Uh, but the hardware chip inside, this is the, the Sony IMX492, it actually has even smaller pixels that are hardware bin together uh, to, to create that mode that we use for astronomy. But if you unbin that, you'd get a 2.3 micron pixel and a much bigger uh, array of pixels. Uh, it's 8184, 8000 by 5616, by 5500. So 8,000 by 5500, so that's over 45 megapixels native if you uh, unbin this thing completely. Why wouldn't we use that all the time? Well, uh, it's not quite as sensitive when you do that because, uh, well, first of all, it's it lowers it from a 14-bit to a 12-bit um, chip at that point, so you're losing some bits per pixel. That's going to be some data that you're losing. Uh, also, the full well capacity and the dynamic range drop to do that. So it's a, a pretty good hit to do that. So I don't recommend for most deep sky imaging to, to, to go into that mode, uh, but you can certainly experiment with it. Uh, where might you want to do that? Um, I would say if you're doing planetary imaging, though honestly a planet's going to be a very small object in the middle of a very big black field of view, but if you want the highest resolution, you can drop down, and don't mind about a little bit less uh, uh, pixel bit depth, um, you can unbin it 
to get really high resolution planetary lunar, lunar images. Uh, and then I suppose if you're doing deep sky photography with a very small wide field camera, uh, camera lens in front, so you're getting a super wide field of view and you're very undersampled, like like each pixel is only seeing seven arc seconds of sky, then it might be nice to unbin it and get a little bit more resolution per arc per pixel, uh, more arc second per pixel, that's the, the resolution. Um, so you can experiment with it. But like I said, for I, I'd say 95% of all deep sky imaging, um, you'll want to use it in the 4.63 micron pixel mode, 4,000 by 3,000. Um, at the time of this video, you can unlock that mode in Starshoot IC. That's the camera control software that comes with the program. Um, we're looking into un uh, unlocking it in the ASCOM driver, but that hasn't quite happened yet. Uh, but definitely in the uh, in, in, in the included software, you can unlock the, the full resolution at a slightly lower pixel bit depth. All right, so I think I talked about everything there. Um, other than just, let me just reiterate about a mono uh, chip. When you take a picture, this is a black and white camera. You do not get a full color image out of it. Um, a a, a one-shot color camera is definitely the most convenient, uh, right? You don't have to worry about filter wheels, um, different three different filters uh, to form a full color image. But because of those uh, advantages I mentioned before, being able to see all the light, every pixel sees all the light, instead of with a Bayer matrix, which is that color matrix in front of a one-shot color, where the light gets diverted and the red pixel, the red photon goes to this pixel and the green goes to that, you lose some sensitivity doing that. So all of the pixels see all the light, much more sensitive, and then you get to do um, uh, much more in terms of what type of filter you want to put in front of it. Um, so it's more work, but I really think it's worth it. So let me show you some examples of uh, what I've taken with this. So this is just my uh, screen. And can we see this? Yes, we can. All right, so this is what you get off of the camera. This is a NGC 4565, um, a very pretty, whoops, a very pretty edge on Galaxy. Um, this is a stack of, I, f I forget, I probably should have had all, all this detail um, in front of me, but it's a stack of at least 20 shots. All of these shots that you're going to see are uh, 180 seconds long, so three minute exposures, and a stack of varying different uh, number of, of, of uh, images. But this is what you get off the camera, it's a monochrome image, and then in order to get a color image of this, I would have to shoot through a red filter, then a green filter, then a blue filter. So you probably want to put your Nautilus filter wheel uh, in front of this and get our LRGB filter set, and then you're, you're set for taking the, the full full gamut. But I wanted to show a uh, an exposure right off the camera, and this is NGC 4565. So here's a shot um, of a different object. I, I ran out of time to get 4565 with all the colors, but I took this other one, uh, M101. Um, and this is an LRGB. So I shot through the luminance channel. The, uh, that's the clear filter to get all the details. And then I shot uh, through the red, green, and blue filters to grab the rest of it. And there's some cool, pretty cool little red H-alpha uh, no, what do you call them? H2 regions uh, in this galaxy that I hope uh, kind of pop out in the video. Uh, so again, 180 second exposures. Um, this one was kind of a fun one. Um, it's a little planetary nebula, 15 NGC 1514, and it really glows bright in the blue. Um, so I was happy to have discovered this object out there. Um, there's a funny kind of backstory here that, well, first of all, the, the seeing was, was horrid this night. Uh, that's why these stars here are so fat. Um, I looked up and stars were twinkling like crazy. I didn't think I'd be able to get anything, but but it actually, the, the mount tracked pretty well. The stars are pretty round, but they just got really fat. Um, but again, LRGB, um, again, 180 second exposure, so not long at all. And then this one is one of my favorites. I did a little bit more work on this guy. So this is um, M82 up in Ursa Major. Um, this is, you can see the uh, title here, it's an HA LRGB. So I combined different techniques to take this picture. First of all, it's LRGB. I did, I did the four color, the three colors and then a luminance. And then I also stuck a, a very narrow band hydrogen alpha filter um, uh, in front of the camera to get this, these streamers coming out. They, they do glow in the red, but they really glow uh, with high contrast in H alpha. Um, so combined them all together. I'm using, by the way, I'm using PixInsights here. So all of these 
uh, images were um, uh, processed solely in PixInsights. But uh, again, yeah, it's just it's amazing what this little camera can do with 180 second exposures. Um, I should say the this is the only one where I did take five minute exposures for the H Alpha channel, just because H Alpha is so dim. Um, so I boosted that up a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun, and it's a very sensitive camera, and I think uh, you will really enjoy it when you get your filter wheel, your color filters together, and then you know you can go to town doing um, broadband images um, when the moon is uh, set, when it's not out, and then you can stick an H-alpha filter, oxygen 3, or maybe a sulfur 2 filter, and do some narrow band um, combining like the Hubble palette of emission nebula. That that that's where the super high resolution, uh, I'm not high resolution, sorry, um, high contrast images come into play. And you can even do those when the moon is out too. They they are less affected by moonlight and light pollution. So even in urban areas with a lot of sky glow, uh, you do a narrow band image, and you know it's amazing what what stuff can come out. All right, well, there you have it. This is the G10 mono camera. Uh, we're really excited about it. A much uh, uh, anticipated and a really nice upgrade from our older G16 mono. All right, thank you very much. Clear skies.